Um, there and of course you can watch us we are on your computer your mobile device just head on over to super talk tv today we're going to learn about a good things that's happening in humphreys county with the 4-h joining us is miss regina boykins to talk about their pop-up and pick up um, events that they're trying to get going so hey regina hello rebecca how you doing and everyone in radio land <laughs> we're doing well today's probably not a good day to pop up and pick up anything but i think this idea is great regina so i was thumbing through facebook when it wasn't frozen on us as it was today and i came across these wonderful photos of the 4-h there in hump threes county getting out and just doing service in their community of picking up trash and i thought man what a great uh, thing this is so miss regina how did this all come about well, with the immature extension 4-H program here in Harpers County, with the young people, you always got to be creative and getting them involved in the community, as well with adults as well. But, you know, just like a lot of communities, we have a problem with litter. And oftentimes, you see it so often enough, it's like if, you don't, if you're not at least part of the problem, at least try to be part of the solution. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to instill in the young people in the 4-H program, teaching them about citizenship, about community pride and responsibility, that even if they didn't put it down there, they can at least pick it up. So the pop-up and pick up, one day I just saw an error, I'm like, I can't take it anymore. So I sent a text out to some 4-H, and I'm like, okay, meet me at this site, and let's do this. So I had about two or three pop-up, and we picked up. And it just, it's just an initiative to get the young people to see what a difference they can make in their community. And, it, you know, with the, the issue of litter, of course, you know, there's got to be some educational components to it, uh, just an ongoing awareness. And then seeing those young people out there picking up that litter, people going by and seeing that, hopefully it's instilling them if they are littering to stop. And if they're not, to at least come on and try to help the next time or at least pop up and pick up in the area where they might see litter in their, their, their neighborhood. Well, I got, I that it was spread. Oh, yeah, I think it's great, uh, Regina. I think this is a great uh, all around just sort of um, opportunity for kids. And it's something easy for them to do. And it's something easy, too, for other 4-H uh, groups or other organizations to sort of use this idea, pop up and sort of pick up. So what did the students think when they showed up and you were like, OK, we're picking up trash, kids? Did they turn and run or were they grabbing their little picker upper thingies? I see that you've got them in your photos and get to work. Well, we work with Key Bells on it beautiful, and they always supply our, our pick ropers and our, and our garbage bags. So when they pop up, they know what they have to do, and we, we give ourselves a timeline so that we don't get out there and lay again, that we get out there, we do what needs to be done, and the, the goal is to leave the place looking nicer and cleaner. Which I think is definitely a good thing. Did they seem to get the idea that maybe, if nothing else, you're instilling in these kids not to be litterers? Exactly, because they see the, the effort of picking up those little pieces of, of, of candy paper. <laughs> they see even with the best litter picker up, as you know, you still got to, you know, put the effort out there and, and pick it up. So it, it, it really helps them to instill in them not to litter. And also I encourage them to tell their friends and their families not to litter. I think that's great. You know, it, it works sometimes from the bottom up. So when kids start telling their parents or grandparents, hey, you know, put that in the trash can. I don't want to have to pick that up on Saturday when Miss Regina <laughs> brings us back out here or whatever it may be. It can just at least help uh, them think twice before before they do that. And it's a good message for all of us to remember here on Good Things Regina is not to, is not to litter. So tell us about the 4-H there in Humphreys County, because I am a big proponent for, you know, um, people taking advantage of what 4-H has to offer in their communities. I think sometimes we forget about all the activities, all of the, um, you know, opportunities for learning that are there. So how active is the 4-H there in Humphreys County? Now, I could go on about 4-H, but, you know. I was... <laughs> you go right on, Miss Regina. I'll stop you when I have to. This forest has so many different components to it. We have uh, community clubs. We have in-school clubs. Uh, uh, just many different ways that young people can get involved in 4-H. Uh, there's the community clubs where we have, like, an adult that's a certified volunteer with the 4-H program. And then they have, they have to have at least five young people that's interested in some, and they get together maybe once a month. They talk about what they can do in a community. Uh, they each have, like, topics that they want to learn about, what we call projects. And so it's just stealing them a lot of life skills. Uh, we say that 4-H is a community of young people across America who are learning leadership, citizenship, and many life skills. So, so other – yeah, go ahead. 
Go ahead, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, other than obviously the pop-up and the pickup, which caught my attention, what are some other um, projects around Belzoni that you guys have been doing? Well, we got the community clubs. We got some uh, school uh, youth uh, volunteer-based programs. We got a program called 4 Tech Changers, where we got young people teaching people in the community about social media and different uh, parts of uh, tackling uh, technology illiteracy. But what they're doing is promoting the literacy of technology, as well with our Junior Master Wellness Program, where we got uh, the health science at the uh, Thomas C. Randall Vocational Center teaching their community about health literacy. So I like this part. You know, a lot of our programs at the extension is volunteer-based. And we're now we're starting to use a lot of our programs to get the young people out in the community and promote literacy, be it health, technology, or even just reading overall literacy, using our young people to make a difference in our community. And, Rebecca, that's really how 4-H really started. How did you get involved with 4-H, Ms. Regina? Well, I was a... Uh, at a college student at USM, I saw a bulletin of our extension was going to uh, posi- have a position open. I, I applied, and that was a story about 26 years ago. <laughs> oh, I was just going to ask you, what year were you at USM? But you were there a little bit before me, but Southern Miss to the top. Oh, wow, well, go USM. Oh, I be careful. Bulldog, go Bulldog, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Regina, it is good things, so we can cheer for all the home teams um, here on, on this show. And I think cheering for the 4-H is definitely, um, it's definitely a good thing. How many students do you all have now involved there in Humphreys County? We have about uh, maybe a little over 100 4-Hers now. Uh, you know, like a lot of you, we have a challenge, you know, getting our young people in. But this is just one way of, you know, showing young people active in the community, of getting more people, young people involved, and getting more of those too, because we need volunteers to work with the young people. What does that volunteers position look like, Regina? I think sometimes when when adults hear volunteer, they run just because they think it's going to be super time consuming or overcommitted because we're overcommitted already. What is that? What what would a volunteer role with the local 4-H look like? Basically, just you know, uh, having a love for children, and basically, you do the certification. You 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 fit to your lifestyle. Especially if you feel like a club leader, you, you, you set the time and location when you and the kids meet. You just find your niche within the program, and you can uh, adapt it to your lifestyle, to your, your, your schedule. What have you learned about kids whenever they're given the opportunity to be part of the solution in their communities? Are they willing to jump in and do it? Yes, and you see them. You, everybody wants to feel important. And kids, young people want to feel important as well. When you can go out there and see you can make a difference, that 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 instills them confidence, uh, just the ability, their leadership skills. And you know, we one of our things is we try to uh, expose young people to a lot of positive environments that will enhance them and build their their life skills. It goes back to that saying, Rebecca, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, when you become a forage volunteer, you become part of that village. Amen to that, uh, Miss Regina. If kids want to get involved in that, is that something through their school district, or is like Humphreys County 4-H outside of their school districts? Uh, every county has a 4-H com- uh, program through their extension office. So if they know where their extension office is, or they can even go on the, the MSU uh, extension website and uh, look up their county, and it will give them the number to their their county extension office. Do you have any students to do some of the cooking contests, Miss Regina? Not this year, but I have had someone do the crepe contest that we have in Jackson, as well as the omelet contest. So my daughter and I were a judge for the crepe contest this past February, Miss Regina, and we're wow. going to be a judge for the omelet contest coming up this fall. So just go ahead and put in a little plug to your 4-H'ers to come down and sweet talk, and then they might win. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make sure I look you up. <laughs> Uh, as I said, I'm a huge proponent for all things 4-H. I think it's great in our communities, and I just love seeing that you had this pop-up and pick-up happening there in, in Humphreys County. Everybody listening could use a little bit of that in their own community. So, Miss Regina, I appreciate your time. And thank you so much, for Rebecca, for inviting me.
All righty, there you go. Look it up. There's a 4-H in your community. Your kids don't have to be part of the, it doesn't have to be through the school. I don't think it is. They can be outside. And from what I've seen, it's just so cool. My kids have taken part in the archery through uh, 4-H, or my kid. No, one's not big enough to throw our, throw, throw arrows around. Uh, but also it's just seeing what the good work that they do um, in our communities. So it's a resource that, to me, isn't utilized enough. But stick with us. we got more for you coming up next.